Hey guys, so uh, I just want to speak briefly uh, about this site uh, that I've been using for a few years now called iCheckMovie. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, to my profile if you want to check it out. Um, basically, you can use this to keep track of the films that you've seen and the films that you're planning to see at some point. You know, if you've seen a film, you can check it. Uh, you can also give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, kind of like YouTube videos, um, to just say whether or not you like it. The thing I like about it is you can also add it to a watch list, so it's quite easy to keep track of the films that I've sort of made a point uh, to watch at some point. And uh, obviously once I've seen it, I can take it off that list. You know, it's, it's kind of a sort of satisfying way of uh, just watching films. Uh, you know, you, you, you have a film like on that list for like a few months and then you finally get around to seeing it. It's like, hey, I can take a film off that list now. And you, you, a target you can make for yourself uh, over a few months, you know, I'm going to get that number on my watch list down to like 50 or something, I don't know. But the other thing you can do on there is uh, you can leave comments about the film. You know, it's kind of like IMDb. You can type out your own uh, user review uh, or you can just leave a, a quick sort of remark or comment about the film. You can find them on uh, my profile uh, just under the comments section if you want. Just can check out some of the things that uh, I've said about films or, you know, check out anybody else's. So, uh, you know, just you have just, just uh, click comment. But like any user site which has like user reviews, there are inevitably going to be some pretty terrible comments or terrible reviews uh, that uh, you find out there, if you can even really call them reviews. Uh, so I just thought I'd uh, take you through a few of them that I think uh, are kind of funny. Uh, today. This first one is for a film called The Impossible, which is uh, about the tsunami in 2003, which uh, hit uh, various countries in the Indian Ocean. And it's about a family that uh, go on holiday to Thailand, and the tsunami hits while they're there, obviously. Um, in reality, they were Spanish. In, in the film, they're English. Um, and it's just about their struggle to survive and everything. Um, so uh, this is one particular review I found on there about that. This movie reminded me of the little girl who wanted nothing more in the world than to look pretty. Okay, so the director of this film wanted it to look good. There's nothing wrong with that. So one morning she sneaks up to her parents' bathroom and plasters mum's makeup all over her face. Look, mummy, I'm pretty now. But they're taking this analogy slightly further than it really needs to go. You know, I, I think I think we get your point here that, you know, the film wants to look pretty, or the director of the film wants the film to look pretty. Only instead of wanting us to think his movie was pretty, the director of The Impossible, could not be bothered to even look up his name, wanted us to cry. This is clear. Um, okay, first of all, the director's name is right at the top of the page, mate. You don't even have to look it up. Now, you seem to be sort of saying that the director of the film didn't want the film to look pretty, he wanted it to just be emotional. I mean... You, you can actually have both of those things, really. A film can be emotional and it can look nice. And again, there's nothing wrong with wanting either of those things from a film, so I, I'm not entirely sure what this person's driving at at the moment. Lacking any real talent or insight into humanity, what's-his-name just deferred to the easy default method simply trying to drown us in feelings. Oh, OK, so he wanted the film to be emotional, but he didn't do a very good job of that. That's fine if you think that, uh, I'd like to know why, though. I do have to say, though, I do like the subtle pun he puts in here, because, like I said, this is about a tsunami. The film actually sort of starts, you know, the big sort of trailer moment is the tsunami coming in and it flooding the holiday resort where the family's staying. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I do like that subtle little pun he's put in there. He laid it on real thick. It was practically a tidal wave of phony emotion. Oh, OK, so that pun is not so subtle, is it? He, he, he laid on that pun real thick, as he puts it. Nothing about this movie was real or authentic. You do know it's based on a true story, right? Despite the fact it was inspired by a true story. Okay, so he does know that. So that, he, even by his own admission, that doesn't make sense. Nothing about this movie was authentic or real, despite the fact that it was real. Huh? It was contrived, unrealistic, even though it's a real story. Uh, by the way, I did a bit of research, actually. This this film is very true to reality. The, the, the sort of biggest and most jarring change, I think, is just the fact that the family's English, in, and in reality they were Spanish. I think that that's probably, like, the only massive difference between the film and reality. It was contrived, unrealistic, two-dimensional, and overflowing... Is that a pun? I'm not sure. ...with mawkish sentimentality, just as gooey and overdone as needless gore. Is he saying needless gore is just always gooey and overdone? <laughs> gore, just in general, doesn't necessarily have to be overdone. And, and also, a film being mawkish, doesn't that kind of imply sentimentality? Which this movie also happens to have. Happens to have what? 
gooey and overdone needless gore. I, I don't remember any gore in this film. The, the, the mother of the family does get pretty banged up, you know, and it, it, they're pretty graphic with uh, how she turns out after the, the tidal wave hits and everything, but uh, I wouldn't consider that gore. Okay, so that's that. Now let's uh, read another one. So this is uh, a review for the film Zombieland Double Tap, a film from last year, which is a sequel to the film Zombieland from 2009. Well, Film Club clearly doesn't know what they're talking about. What they're doing there is referring to a comment from seven years ago at the time that I'm reading this, uh, saying that the film had been cancelled and that they were making a, a TV series instead. Uh, so I guess this entry was on the site long before the film actually got confirmed, which is kind of strange. But yeah, it, I, I think you're a bit late to the party, mate, if you're going to say that they don't know what they're talking about seven years after they left that comment. Um, but now they actually get into their thoughts on the film. The film was very average overall and shouldn't have been made. Well, technically no film should be made, or needs to be made more precisely, but, you know, it, it's zombie apocalypse. They made an entire TV show that ran for, like, I, don't know, I think it's on about the 11th season now, um, about the zombie apocalypse, you know. Are you saying we can't have two films set in the same zombie apocalypse? That have more of a comedic edge to them? It's pure paint by numbers and has no originality. Again, if you're going to say things like that, you need to sort of maybe elaborate and explain what you really mean by that. Uh, the term paint by numbers kind of implies that it doesn't have originality, because, you know, you're saying it's following a very sort of standard sort of formula. Um, to be honest, though, certainly with a comedy film and it following a very sort of basic sort of setup as a zombie apocalypse, I think paint by numbers is kind of a, an understandable kind of approach to take to something, you know, it... The, the setup and the situations you put the characters in is not what, what makes for an interesting film or an interesting idea or an interesting story. It's what you do with that setup. But yeah, he's saying what they did with that setup didn't have originality to it. Fine. That was literally all he had to say about uh, that particular issue with the film. So uh, again, th th it's kind of a recurring problem with these sort of bad reviews you find on these sites. People just sort of make very general sort of points and then don't bother to elaborate on them. So I'm left very confused as to what even their problem is. Emma Stone is too big for this kind of role now. I agree, but to be fair, mate, she was in the original. And she was a main character in the original. So if she hadn't reprised her role for the sequel, it probably wouldn't have gotten made. But then again, he probably would have been okay with that. You know, what, what I'm saying here, mate, is uh, that is why she's in the film. It's, it's because she was in the original. Uh, at, and at the time of the original, she wasn't a very big actress. She was just that, that girl from Superbad. Uh, and this next one is uh, for The Dark Knight. I like this movie very much, but I still feel this is one of the most overrated movies of the decade. Blimey, that is uh, quite a statement. Uh, people calling this as the best superhero movie of the year, when the only high point of the movie is the, it's that one actor who died after doing a really good job in the film, and he is not even the hero. Or maybe he is. So, it's not the best superhero movie of the year. I guess they think Iron Man was the best superhero movie of the year, since that's pretty much the only other superhero movie that came out that year. <laughs> so, it's not like it even had much competition. So, uh, that is quite a quite a bold criticism he's making there. Uh, or he, he's not even sort of saying it's not the best superhero movie of the year. He's just sort of questioning why other people are saying that. Uh, and the reason why he's questioning people saying that is because he thought the high point of the movie was the Joker. That's a reason why it shouldn't be considered the best superhero movie of the year, apparently. Oh, I, I guess he's sort of taking the, the sort of statement, it's the best superhero movie of the year, quite literally. You know, he's saying it's not really a superhero movie if the best thing about the movie isn't the superhero. Or maybe he's saying it can't even be considered a superhero movie because Batman doesn't have powers. No, to be honest, I, I, don't, I don't really... Uh, no, no, what he's saying there. I, the best guess I can make is that he's saying it shouldn't be considered a good superhero movie if the best thing about it is not the superhero. Which is an interesting kind of idea to have. Uh, personally, I don't really agree with that. I think, you know, a good superhero movie just needs to have a good story, good characters, and a satisfying conclusion to everything. Uh, I don't think I need to see a lot of the superhero to consider it a good superhero movie. I do agree, this is a very good crime drama film, and a fine one in that class. But it isn't a superhero movie. Ah, oh, there we go. I was right. He doesn't think this is a superhero movie, in my opinion, just because it has Batman in it. That's actually kind of an interesting point. 
it's not really a good superhero movie in the sense that it does a lot of the things that you would expect a good superhero movie to do. It's actually the kind of things that make The Dark Knight good, are the kind of things that you would expect from a crime drama or an action film, just in general. Does that mean it isn't a good superhero movie, though? It's just a good movie that happens to have a superhero in it? Possibly. I would say, personally, that I don't think that's really a problem. I'm not really interested in any particular kind of good movie. I'm just interested in seeing a good movie in general. If it's one that just happens to have Batman in it, that's fine by me. I just want to see a good movie myself. This person, on the other hand, obviously just went into this uh, excited to see it because it was Batman. And the things that made the film good didn't really have much to do with Batman. So on a personal level, it left him feeling a bit empty. That's fine, but that's not really the film's fault, I don't think. That's more the fault of you having the wrong kind of expectations. The plot was very simple, with a lot of psychological undertones, which engulfed itself in its own sense of misplaced self-righteousness. It doesn't sound like a very simple plot. <laughs> and no, I'm not saying these to claim myself to be an intellectual. These are merely my opinions put in terms put in the terms of the movie's quotes, and I am a very simple-minded man, and you can rip me on that. Rip on me for that. Okay, so he's saying don't have a go at me for thinking, for, for, for not liking the kinds of things the film's trying to do because you're simple-minded? And I guess he's trying to sort of claim he's not standing on a soapbox and trying to act like he knows better than anybody else. You know, he, he can see, he can see through the ploys that this film is trying to pull wool over your eyes and pretend that it's smart when it's not really, it's just pretentious. Is that what he's saying? I mean, he doesn't say any of those things. I'm kind of just putting words in his mouth here, but that's the kind of thing I hear sometimes about certain people when, when it comes to something that's generally liked by a lot of people, and a lot of people say, oh, it's brilliant, and other people step forward and sort of say, no, it's not. It's just trying to fool you into thinking that it's smart. Is that... He's trying to sort of say that's not what he's saying because he's actually quite a simple-minded person himself. He's saying it's just not what he's interested in when it comes to, you know, obviously, uh, like I said before, he's looking more for a superhero film. He's not looking for these sort of psychological, um, you know, and moral questions that the film asks. Fine, but again, that doesn't really mean it's a bad film. Or it, it doesn't take away from how good the film is. It's just maybe not what you're personally looking for. I do respect others' opinions but just don't care about people jumping on to defend the movie with empty arguments like this is an intellectual piece of art and can't be understood by simpletons. I've never heard anyone say anything remotely resembling that when it comes to The Dark Knight. A lot of people do, unlike you, consider this just a good superhero film. I say to those people, good for you being one of the intellectuals on the planet. I am glad that these filmmakers who can quench your thirst for critical thinking. I don't really know if the film ever sort of touches on the idea of critical thinking. It, it more, it's more just sort of asking moral sort of questions about uh, what what is right and wrong in in society. You know, where, where do you draw the line on uh, how much you can punish people for certain things and not others? I just wanted a superhero movie. That's all. I would argue that you got that. You just got a lot of other stuff in there as well. But what it would it, the vibe I'm getting from this is that he doesn't like how there's more of a focus on the Joker in this film. It, it is very much the Joker's film and Batman is just sort of there trying to stop him. If you want more of a Batman film, I would say maybe watch Batman Begins. Um, but I would assume if, you've wa if you're watching The Dark Knight, you've probably seen Batman Begins. Now that I think about it, I saw The Dark Knight before I saw Batman Begins, so maybe not. Okay, so this next one uh, is for the film Gone Girl. I don't usually leave comments, but this was so bad, I have to. Terrible. What's with all the hype? I don't even remember much hype for this film. All actors are really bad. If, if that's your opinion, okay, fair enough. I would argue that it's not really a film that's really driven by the acting in any particular way. It's it's more driven by the tone and the, the ideas of it. The conversations and acting sound and seem so fake. <laughs> that's, that's part of the sentence. It's just all over the place. The conversations and acting sound and seem so fake. The, the acting and the sound was fake, maybe? Is that what he means? Very Americanized, and not in a good way. I'm just going to have to do a bit of research here. It's an American book. 
you know, it, it, it's always been an American property. I, I was thinking at first when he said that uh, that maybe this film they'd done the same thing they did with High Fidelity or um, Girl on the Train, actually, uh, where they took British novels and set them in America and just and you know Americanized the, the whole thing. But th this was always an American. It's set in Britain. Nope, it is set in America as well. So uh, yeah, I've really got no clue what he means by that, and, and not in a good way. Again. What, what does that mean? Is is there a good way to Americanize something and a bad way to Americanize something? I would argue that maybe there is. Like, uh, High Fidelity probably was the good way of doing it, and The Girl on the Train was probably the bad way of doing it, but I don't know exactly how you define the good way to Americanize something and the bad way to Americanize something. Um, just making a good and bad film is all that boils down to, really. What a waste of time and hype. Can you waste hype? Hype always seems like kind of a waste to me. I, but honestly, yeah, I, I don't really remember much hype about this film. Had high expectations coming from a prolific director. Oh, I see. He heard a lot of hype about this film, and he feels like he's been fooled now. I'm afraid, mate, that is on you. But it ended up being butthurtly disappointed. What are you butthurt about? Does he even know what the term butthurt means? Uh, and this last one is for The Matrix. Everyone in the cast is a horrible actor. It's not really a film driven by acting very much. You know, the characters are very sort of one note and very sort of flat. You know, it's not really a film you watch for the acting. Or at least is acting horribly. I'll charitably assume that Hugo Weaving's plotting direction was a deliberate, execrable choice. Okay, so they're saying Hugo Weaving's style of acting in this film was deliberate, but other people's style of acting in this film wasn't? I don't understand why he's singled out Hugo Weaving as getting a free pass. Maybe because he's playing something that's in the Matrix. He's actually playing a computer. Most of the other people you see are, are real people, I guess. But the, the, they're also very sort of stoic sort of characters because the whole thing about the Matrix is it's not a character-driven story. It's about the concepts. But even besides the bad acting, the movie has several defects. Okay, what are they? It seems to take its premise too seriously. Really? It's just a goofy action film. <laughs> what part of it is suggesting that it's taking things too seriously? I suppose, you know, all the sort of uh, philosophical stuff it, it touches on, but uh, actually in the first Matrix, there isn't that much of that, I don't think, or I don't remember that there being that much of it. And comes off cro cross as a bit sensationalist. Maybe within the context of the film a little bit. I don't think it's trying to give any kind of message of, to the audience about the real world. It's It's more just trying to get through to the people in the Matrix within the context of the film, I think, with, with the sort of messages that it's sending. I don't think it's preaching to the audience at all. I never got that impression myself. And having three final battles at the end is excessive. Surely, by definition, there can only be one final battle. If, if, it's, if there's another battle after that, then it's not really the final one, is it? Does he mean that there were basically three things going on at the same time? Kind of like, you know, the way there are four things going on at the same time at the end of Phantom Menace or something? Which, coincidentally enough, came out the same year. I actually don't remember that being the case, but it's been a while since I saw this film, so maybe. I dislike this on its own merits, but I despise it because so many of its fans seem to think that it's metaphysics instead of a movie. I don't know anyone that thinks that. This may include the Wachowskis. I don't know if you call the Wachowskis fans of the film, considering they're the ones that made it. Can you be a fan of something if you also made it? Maybe you can. That's, that's an uh, interesting kind of uh, psychological sort of question, I suppose. You know, if you're not a fan of something you created yourself, it sort of makes me wonder, well, why did you create it? It sounds to me like he's criticising the film for being liked by the people who made it, which is, is true of quite a lot of films, I think. Anyway, that's like, guys, uh, just some funny or just some... Uh, interesting or sort of funny remarks people have made on the, the site I Shake Movie. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to just the site in general and also my profile if you want to check it out. See you later, guys.